right. I'm just going to look at a Savannah monitor. All right, this is a, this is a mature female. So the maturity on the savannas is typically, you know, if you're really feeding them well and you're keeping them real warm, I say, you know, within reason, uh, sexual maturity is going to occur within at the shortest first two years of life to maybe the first four years of life, as long as you're, you know, succeeding with all, you know, what they need. And, uh, the, you know, it's a smaller growing species. Sometimes people tend to overfeed them and we overdo it even though they want to eat doesn't necessarily mean we should just feed them all they want. Um, when you're sexing your savanna, this is very clear. We're looking at, you know, the tail, if it was a male, the tail base would stick out. You see further, you know, for his hemipenes, uh, the female's head is kind of small in comparison to the body. And uh, you kind of just get a general, you know, size understanding. They are dimorphic. So that means that Savannah monitor males are larger, often a third larger, and in some cases, even twice as large as a female. So this female right here is, uh, you know, basically she's on the edge of a basking surface. So this area is very, very hot. Uh, and I'm just gonna kind of show you a little bit of my setup here. Uh, it seems like there are, you know, there's some very successful Savannah monitor keepers out there and for some reason um, they don't agree with all of the way I do it but I'm just going to show you my setup so here we have four big ceramic plates we also have sunlight coming through here but you have to realize that this glass is going to reflect 90 degrees to the surface pane of uh, UV light so we're really not getting the benefit of UV so I use an active UV bulb actually active UV bulb and another that's a 250 watt and that's a 160. And uh, I mean, the surface right here is, is man, this, this is hot. This is like, I can't even, if I leave, I could bake an egg here. I mean, I, or not bake, but I could cook an egg here. I wonder if I put an egg here just to show people how hot it gets. Okay, so I generally was, uh, I have a lot of substrate in this cage and people don't seem to think that there's a lot of substrate in this cage. Uh, and all my monitor cages generally, uh, I have a lot of substrate. Uh, a lot of substrate being bioactive uh, mater you know, material with bugs and stuff like that allows the animal to have less of an impact on them. But what I did do, I came in here because everybody was, uh, or some people were thinking that this is all just cypress mulch. And this is actually potting soil, sphagnum moss. There's a little bug running around. Um, but there's uh, decaying leaves. And so what I did is I, I dug up some of this and I put a couple of the tubes in here but these guys just seem to really enjoy the tubes there's a lot of material here all right so you know you 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 have that's you know in, in some places it's over 12 inches but you can see there's a lot of decaying material here and it's taking you know, a long time you know you, you could get away with Gosh, you, you could go, you might even be able to go years without you know cleaning this cage. And what you do is you come in here and you remove you know uh, noticeable uh, leavings from these guys. And a lot of the stuff uh, pretty much is easy to, to deal with. So you come in here and you'll do some cleaning. And I can show you that this little guy, well, if you can see him, but he's enjoying this tube. And I guess the benefit here is deep, deep substrate allows uh, you to deal with uh, humidity. So uh, having a lot of substrate and you know it being moist there, it's constantly breathing and creating humidity. Uh, my building is very humid. This room is very humid. This gets very hot. Right now we're working uh, ambient temperature. It's probably 82 right now. Uh, it's not a very sunny day. It's kind of a cloudy, cool day here, but this room can really get warm. And uh, you know, you just, they're just, they're, I think they're, certainly not a difficult animal to keep uh, they definitely benefit from having uh, space proper diet uh, a lot of our diet is rodents it's um, parts like uh, chicken parts turkey parts we feed them roaches um, these guys uh, particularly like uh, Madagascar hissing roaches we feed, uh, feed them uh, just a, a bit of variety some ground turkey and uh, this is, in my opinion, this is a, a very healthy looking Savannah monitor. I mean, the, you know, she's, she's developing follicles in here. So her weight 
maybe a little bit plumper than normal. A big savanna mono that is fat does not necessarily mean it's a healthy savanna. Uh, they get uh, fatty liver disease. So basically you have, you know, an animal like this, this is an opportunistic feeder. So it will eat largely as much food as I throw in front of it until it gets full. Well, if you keep doing this quite quickly, it's going to take all that extra energy that's not used in its day to day, and it's going to conserve that uh, as fat. So it's fat cells are all going to fill up. Once it's fat cells are, I can't even speak, fat cells are uh, filled up. Then basically what it starts doing is it starts storing extra calories in the liver and it gets something called fatty liver disease and the liver enlarges and this can be a very fatal horrible thing that takes a lot of savannas so this is you know good things to uh, consider obviously this is not complete but this is you know i'm just going to go over some of the basic ideas and setups and you need lots of light bulbs up here is some of i store some of my uh stuff because these guys are not very boreal they're uh major you know, terrestrial varanus. So they're gonna benefit uh, having lots of substrate to dig if they want. Uh, maybe because I'm giving these guys the temperatures and the humidity they need, they don't really do a lot of digging. Okay, so I guess that's part one of Nerd's small little savanna project. Say goodbye. Bye, sweetie.